Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. We're not you on the Monday, it's month end, 30 sep. Having all kinds of trouble uh, getting set up here uh, this morning. My systems got all a bit screwy over the weekend. Anyway, be that as it may, we're running a little bit late, but not a whole lot to talk about. Um, We've got uh, some German data coming out, basically European data in general, CPI data that should come in pretty weak um, this morning. And then we have uh, the real month-end nonsense um, for this afternoon, and we'll be watching stocks. Over the weekend, a couple things happened. Chinese PMI missed, fifth contraction in a, lo- in a row, but stocks went higher. On a denial from the Treasury about this investment ban in Chinese stocks. So that was denied. Equities went up to 29.80. Now we're at 29.75. Um, currencies, as you can see, haven't moved a heck of a lot. Uh, vol is still hovering around all term, all time lows in currencies, which is a pain in the ass. But we're just going to make do with what we've got. Uh, let's look at a couple of things. Dollar yen to start with here. Uh, looks like there's some resistance up here at 108.50. This is important basically for two reasons. If you get up there for a, um, a silly reason, say quarter end fix reason, uh, you can fade it. But if you get up there through a real reason, say you know positive news on the trade war or general positivity, uh, the market could get go- get caught short above 108.50. So we really need to watch closely at 108.50 and then ask ourselves, why are we here when we're there? Uh, And then make a decision whether to sell or buy it. Here in the middle at 107.84, there's no trade. Just sit tight. Euro turned uh, but did not really punch through the highs like we thought it would. Uh, We had Basically, euro yen turned with the negativity at the end of the day there. So really a nothing bar. We did make a new low, uh, but now we're right in the middle of nowhere. Not much to do with this. Uh, We are watching that trend line. You can draw this here. Um, And then this trend line here, which is what everyone is kind of looking at at the moment. Comes in basically 110 now. So this line gets lower and lower and lower. Um, And we're waiting for this first line to break and then the second line to break to for a trend reversal. And until we get those breaks, we we're not going to pre-trade this. Um, If you'd like, you could trade it on the short side. That would make sense. Uh, For us, we just have this inkling of a feeling that this thing is going to turn so we're just leaving it alone and we're just waiting for these trend lines to go let's talk cable shit's looking a bit wobbly uh 122.80 or 122.70 which is this low here from august 12th uh sorry that's 122.82 these are important lows this looks like it's gonna keep going lower I don't recommend trading it. It's totally news and comment driven. Uh, This could shoot up in a second. It could collapse in a second. It's really sort of helter skelter. I would avoid it. Over the weekend, a few banks have put out these buy euro sterling recommendations. So there will be stops to get long at 89.05. You could probably make some money around that level. Uh, But again, we're just avoiding sterling for now. Uh, if anything, we're buyers of Sterling Swiss. Uh, as everybody knows, core long Sterling Swiss will be buyers of Sterling Sterling Swiss right around 121, the figure. So we will be fading what the banks are saying in Euro Sterling, but it's still 80 points away. Dollar Swiss is a more interesting chart. Even though it was mid range, this did bearish engulf, so it made a new high, 49, marginal, but new high, closed just below the low here 99.10 this is interesting this is a trend line here and this goes to our 
you know, negative dollar bias. We're going to wait for this thing to happen. We do think it is going to happen. It might have to wait till the end of quarter end, but this trend line is very sexy. If you wanted to preempt this on sort of negative risk sentiment, you could sell through 99 here. Um, if you remember last week, we were selling through 90 and then we canceled it. We just didn't like it. It's the same kind of trade. It's not five star, but this could um, this could go lower. But this will have to happen if either it's sort of some silly impeachment news or massive risk off. So check your story uh, before you click, uh, but keep this in mind in your sort of various what if scenarios. Euro yen bullish engulfed after eight nine down days we talked about that on friday do not know what to do with it now because we now have this tail and it is month end this could go anywhere um, if you did get long on friday you should have stopped out um, you know once we traded back below 118 it was too you know and the news was quite negative there it would have made sense to kill this if you didn't kill it and you feel like a trend is going to start i can understand that as well um, you know, you have to have your stop down at 117.50. So, do you want to piss away all that PL? I don't know. Uh, but this was this went from incredibly bullish bar to marginally bullish and kind of neutral. So, we're staying away from uh, Euro yen now. We're square yen and yen crosses. Just watching. One thing we are watching uh, with vigilance is the cold chart. This looks like it wants to tip. We talked about it on Friday. As soon as we started talking about it, I got like loads of uh, calls and direct messages and chats, and everyone just started slamming gold um, all the way down to 93. But then everyone basically got caught short. Uh, when the negative news came out, we traded back up to the figure, and we were it was making a decision what to do, and then the China news came out, and gold went back up to 07 and we all had to stop out it's a classic clusterfuck in FX or trading in general um, but that's not to say it doesn't you know we were being cheeky by preempting this break I think below 93 it'll just be too powerful to stop so if you want to be conservative sell through 93 if you want to be cheeky and try and preempt the break at 93 you can be core short this wick is something to keep in mind. That would normally be kind of bear, bullish, but we just feel like the pull the positioning is so long in gold. And there's so many people who are long gold who don't really understand why they're long gold. Like Yahoo Finance told them to be long gold, so they bought gold ETFs. This needs to get cleaned out. You know, this breaks and gets down to 1450. That would be the sensible place to buy it. But the problem with gold, when it starts going down, it becomes nonsensical. So just be real careful about being early to get back long. Because long gold is the right position. The timing and then the place is just wrong right now. You just can't be long gold at 1500 uh, currently under the current market conditions. So where you're going to buy it, is it 1450? I don't know. Is it going to be 1410? We remember, um, you know, there are these 1380 lows. There's going to be some risk below there. I mean, this looks like the best. This is kind of a trap break, 1380 to 1360. But jeepers, it's a long ways away. Um, we're not concerning ourselves in where to buy gold. We're concerning ourselves in making money through these lows here where we think there will be forced selling. Anyway, gold. Dollar Zar is not looking too good. Um, just can't even get back below 15 here. Uh, this is kind of a harbinger for risk off. Don't really know what to make of it. We're kind of middle of the range here, but the fact that Dollar Zar can't turn lower uh, is a bit peculiar and makes me feel like you can still be safe being short ES. On the other hand, dollar turkey, this chart looks like the gold chart, doesn't it? We haven't traded dollar turkey in a long time, but 565 is worth a look. 
for those brave souls out there who uh, want to trade dollar turkey this is a very important level 565 let's go to ES uh, we traded it from the short side last week god it was it was a pain in the ass I mean how many 30 handle moves up the positions were so tiny you know just keeping your powder dry to sell more such a shitty way to trade and it's really energy sucking and just highly unsatisfying hard to make a good packet of money when you're trading like that um, but we do believe in this core short this is obviously the dailies you're seeing a series of lower daily highs and lower daily lows we did get down to 47 we talked about 37 as the point where the institutional guys are going to say, fuck it, we're now bears. So above 37 or above 40, they want to be long, um, which makes it hectic every time you go down. These guys are buying. But once you get through this 2938, there'll be less support system. So when it goes, say it goes down through 38 and it goes down to 20, I don't know, 2900 or 2880, you're like, where are all these dudes who were buying up here? That's not the way institutional money works, certainly long, short money. They will then be selling rallies. So anyway, without going into like some philosophical discourse on this, 29.38 is, or, is an important level, especially on a daily close. If we do get a close below there, the fast money, tactical money will now be, will then start selling rallies instead of buying dips. Currently they're buying dips. If we close below this, they're selling rallies. If you're a beginner a trader, if you're a beginner trader and don't understand this, I don't know what to tell you. Just be patient. You'll figure it out uh, sometime in the next five years. Uh, this is the way tactical institutional money works. What else? We got FGBL. We're core short this shit. You know, we're just constantly selling high ones and then we're trying to grab P and L on moves lower and we have a core short we've been core short um, for the SEP contract this is now the DEES contract this is not a gap that needs to be filled this is a new contract um, we're basically saying the 70 basis point negative yields are going to are is are never going to be reached again so we're patiently core short this shit's not going to fall out of bed obviously um, but we're core short boons. Uh, ZN, we've had less luck with. We haven't really been rhythm with. Uh, we're square at the moment, but we also think the same. I mean, technically, you could you could probably sell ZN as we approach the 150 yield or the 160 yield. Uh, but we're sticking with boons right now because we think the ECB cycle is over and we're looking for that fiscal kick where they're going to have to sell bonds to raise money to support their economy boy i sure am talking a lot on a monday month end when there's not a whole heck of a lot out there just a quick recap gold is the most important chart we are going to see sterling selling from the gang they're focusing on euro sterling above 8905 today we don't recommend getting involved in that. Uh, there was bad news in China, so that kind of helps with our core short stocks. Uh, today we'll be selling between 80 and 90, uh, trading that from the downside. Dollar Turkey 565 is a nice chart point, and for the, only for the brave. And dollar Swiss, bearish engulfed. This trend line needs to be watched. I've said enough, actually too much today. I wish you all an excellent trading day, an excellent month end. Tie the books up. Uh, get your admin finished. It's going to be a busy week this week. Um, month ends are often shitty days to trade, so keep that in mind. And I will see you all tomorrow. Ciao.